I know, maybe that's why they would have tilted if they had lost that game, but it looks like we are already in the picks and bans here for game number two. So as I think the real conclusion here is that Fnatic definitely putting up a better fight than maybe most expected. So Secret, while they won, so they're not going to be entirely on tilt, they do have to watch out a little bit on what's to come in game number two. Speaking of tilt, maybe Fnatic is now on tilt. I, I, Possibly. I feel, I feel like if they have to look back, they probably knew that they had the other hand and that they maybe should have closed it out if they hadn't taken those two stupid fights that they did. I, would, I, think, it can take, I think it can go both ways. When you come in as, as a massive underdog and, and you play the team that is supposed to crush you and, pretty but, even in game Exactly, one. but if you're that close, that's going to tilt you even yeah, more. Like, yeah, it can, oh, it can mean a lot more, right? Because you're so close, you really you're right at the doorstep. What do you think, Kai? I'm not sure about that. I, I would agree with Ellen there, especially if you're coming as the under into this matchup and you know that you could have won, why would that tilt you? You would be just yeah. going into the next game and saying, okay, we execute a bit better and I'm, we I'm can saying to myself, win we can beat game. these guys. Yeah. We can play with these guys and we can win. And look at that, the crowd cheering Tusk makes oh, it yeah. through after that very first game, the opening game. We've seen that pretty much band out the entire day and now coming back for Team Secret. And then the Queen of Pan, the clock now. Going on over to Fnatic. Hi, I think that's the most, popular, uh, the most popular second mm. round pickup. Yeah. Green and Clock work together. Yeah, that's what we've been seeing pretty much all day here for anyone who's been going for the second picks. Well, uh, as you guys mentioned, I mean, Secret, they, they kind of get that easy win, although it wasn't as easy as normal. Should, uh, but should also mention the, uh, the the Shadow Demon ban coming out. Yeah, I, I think it was, it was ironic through much of that match that uh, the guy that was sitting on 4K <laughs> net worth yeah, that when one. everybody else had 10K or more was arguably the guy that for much of the match played the best. Ketchigimba yeah. had a heck of an opening game on. Oh, oh and the Bloodseeker comes out. I mean, I, this, this is what we mentioned. This is why everyone likes to watch Secret is yeah. that you go for kind of the normal composition, get that win, all right, now it's time to flaunt our yeah, stuff exactly. in game number I think this two. Is, this is exactly why it was good that Secret won game one, because <laughs> otherwise we may not have seen them sort of loosen up and... That's very true. I mean, we may not have seen like the same composition come out for all three games for them trying to really just secure that win, but they feel pretty comfortable now. Even if game one was close, a win is a win, right, Ben? Of course, Bloodseeker is really exciting to see. What do you think are the strengths that Secret really, really utilize well? You're a big Bloodseeker fan. I don't know. I, I like the, the fact that they, they don't necessarily just put it on Kuroki in the jungle and they, they don't just put it on the carry either. And, and the way they utilize it as well is not through just farming on the carry, but it's actually ganking. And that's something we've seen been very popular throughout the day, right? We've mm. seen fear in the, in the EG matchup where you just go ganking from, from the sixth minute and onwards on, on, the, on the clinks. And, and I think that's exactly what Bloodseeker offers. You know, he's, he's a potential late game damage dealer and everything, but more importantly, he's really, really good at setting up fights and ganks. Yeah, even if the meta entirely throughout the entire professional Dota scene hasn't really settled down, at least for this weekend, we're seeing those trends. You want to go for the ganks and pretty much apply that pressure very early on, then starting from the mid game, it's all about the team fight. You need the disables and the coordination to go onward from there. A couple more bands coming out, the Zeus band coming up for Fnatic. I think it's a very uh, good band yes, on, the, on the side of Fnatic. Zeus and Bloodseeker work really well together mm. just because of the, the, the blood rage that you can apply onto the Zeus where you still get, even though it's global, you still get 50% of that damage on top. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty worthy ban. Uh, and when you add in the fact that S4 is one of the more accomplished Zeus players we've seen, I mean, that's yeah. it, when, you, when you take the combination of two heroes that are really good together and you have at least one star player that's a standout on one of them. That's a dangerous combination. So what heroes do you think Secret could sort of synergize with the Bloodseeker at this point in time? The Zeus is obviously banned out knowing that they have done this before. I think Puck's a really good substitute. It matches up well versus Queen of Pain. They don't have that much lockdown and it offers a lot of control. We see the uh, Dream Coil Blood Right combo yeah. very, very often. Exactly. And like, we just saw an amazing Puck by Mushi. I think if anyone <laughs> can do it better, it's probably S4. Well, maybe, and that's why we're going to see that ban come out from Fnatic. So we won't be seeing any more Puck uh, for now unless we maybe great bends by Fnatic. Three. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Fnatic next up to pick their heroes. Now, are they now still focused on maybe still taking some heroes away from Secret or you've got some key bands out now focus back on your own game? I mean, right now, it's, it's quite obvious that they most likely will will follow up with a support here. Mm. I like a Wyvern pick. We've seen it really Wyvern? successful. Versus oh, yeah, Secret. definitely. Window Wyvern would yeah. be so good right here. Um, 
but other supports are pretty good. But it's just really good versus Blitzik wow. in general. I feel Undying is pretty good against Blitzik yeah. as well. Well, I mean, Undying slipping through the cracks once again. And I mean, one thing to point out with the Wyvern is that you guys have been mentioning Secret not really utilizing the Wyvern as much as the other team. So maybe even if you really want it for Fnatic, you can secure some of those other heroes and then come back to it later on in the picking phase. I was actually wondering um, if you look towards the Bloodseeker and, and what kind of combinations you can, you can follow up with. Does Secret run the Tusk also in, in a non offlane position? May I ask Alan? <laughs> yes. Let me, let me see if our I can see the cops turning it out. He's like searching. <laughs> Follow my thought is because I think um, an offlane Phoenix could be something as well. I, I don't think it it's would be too So secret. far in this patch, yeah. it's only been Zai. Only oh, okay. playing the Tusk. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it move to a four roll. All right. I mean, yeah, that is that is the strength of Secret. And again, so far, sure, that's history for now, but that can change any time. And Secret also securing support for themselves and Dazzle. Dazzle's one of their most stable supports across yeah, the past couple of patches. This is really, really good with the May Laser as well. If you snowball and then just drop a heal bomb, they also like the heal bomb in combination with uh, PL, and they really make use of the offensive Shadow Wave. Yeah, no, it's, their, it's their second most picked hero. They've, they've had uh, nine... Dazzle games already in this patch, and and that's kind of what I what I like to think about with Team Secret is that they they offset the variety in their cores with just incredible stability in their supports. And the PL is not banned out yet. It could right. it, it still could be a pick on the side of Secret here. Yeah, and I mean they they're gonna have that chance unless Fnatic feels really pressured to try to steal that away and uh, go off of their own plans here a little bit. But otherwise, are we still maybe expecting a Wyvern pick here for Fnatic? I mean, they can also transition because Secret has really terrible anti-push and they can always go for, you know, early five-man strat with, you know, let's say any mech carrier, generally like a mech, or uh, sorry, a Pugna. Pugna Undying is actually very, very uh, popular. Disrupt a pickup. Do you think they're expecting a Wiz pickup? No. No, Wiz is banned. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. They oh, banned yeah, out the Are, are right we away. assuming that this is going to be a Mushi Queen of Pain mid? Yes, so, by the far, so far, right? I would, think so. I would yeah. think so. It should be. I think Disruptor is just a follow-up pick onto the potential snowball. It's mm -hmm. when you can get the static to storm on top of the snowball. It's it's pretty good follow-up in terms of locking people down. All right. Well, secret. We've been throwing our ideas around for what they're going to pick, but I mean that's the beauty of watching this team. No, never no, really no know. gyro picker ban yet. Nope, yeah, not here. Saw a lot of it, of course, in the previous match between C9 and IG. Yeah, that's one of the few heroes that can still uh, clear out those zombies really quickly. I think they're uh, right now also determining whether or not it's, it's that four-position Bloodseeker or if it is a carry Bloodseeker. It's, it's not given yet where mm -hmm. he's going to go. Right. And again, we also mentioned the possibility of Tusk going somewhere other than that offlane. I, I really do think, like, think as as Seeker and I now, you do have to think a little bit about your lanes, because Fnatic, I think, is gonna is gonna come at you really hard in this game. All right, yeah. Well, Seeker are putting a lot of thought into it, going all the way through pretty much all their reserve time too, to decide their fourth pick and seeing how that affects the next bands coming out from Fnatic. How much does Seeker want to show here before the last picks come out? Oh, the Storm Spirit. Left open and now picked up by Secret. Pretty good. So far, there's not too much silence, which is usually a downfall for Storm. Mm -hmm. We've seen Storm not being that successful when there was a silence in play that VP played, for example, where Storm was rather <laughs> lackluster. But I, I think it's a it's a solid pick here. It's a it's a potentially really really tough game on the Queen of Pain with the Bloodseeker and the Storm Spirit. Mm -hmm. Very easy initiates on her throughout the early game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Storm gets an early Orchid here, and, and that Queen of Pain is in for a really, really tough time. So are we looking at anything crucial that can really strengthen Secret's lineup? Or for now, I mean, what they've got is pretty much what you're dealing with. Whatever comes out is just going to complement it one way or another. So the band's a little bit more generic for Fnatic. I think they can get away with the four bloods you go fairly easy yeah. in, I, in this matchup. The, I, problem, the problem, though, is if you have a Queen of Pain on the Radiant side, and you potentially get an uphill ward in the mid lane, Storm is going to have a tough time. It's not an easy yes. matchup to run at all. Mm. Yes. But then again, I, I still feel like uh, of the two teams, Team Secret has a lot more options coming into the fifth pick here. They can really? slide, yeah, yeah. They can slide a lot of these heroes over into different roles. I think Fnatic is a lot more locked in. Oh yeah, oh. Fnatic is probably locked down more, but, but they can still, you know, almost pick anything. Fnatic? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll find out for sure.
they can almost pick anything. Wouldn't you wouldn't you think no. that they need a carry as their Oh yeah, yeah okay, but yeah. they can pick almost any carry as as their carry. There's nothing that really mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. stands out. Right, but in terms of overall strategy and kind of oh, yeah, what we're looking for in terms of right, role wise, yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you know that Fnatic has to kind of fill out that role, especially going towards the later portion of the game. And there we always see the PL being banned out from Secret uh, to kind of get rid of at least one of those options. I, I still have a hard time. I, I think the gyro is really good here. Yeah, it's still open. It would fill the role quite well. I'm trying to think if they have the potential to aggro because. Okay. Okay. Dragon Knight. <laughs> Some stable lockdown versus Storm Spirit. I, I I really do not hope they put a Storm mid. Uh, the Dragon Knight mid against yeah. Storm Spirit. I, yeah. I think that'd be That's a mistake. A really tough matchup for DK. Even though, even yeah. though Dragon Knight is like, like over 95% of his games are as a mid in this patch, hmm. he's almost been exclusively a mid. Yeah, well, I mean, we were talking about the other options though here for Fnatic. They do have other options. I mean, you can have that Queen of Pain there and try to make something work out from there, or at least uh, make it stable enough, and maybe that gives the DK enough time to grow towards the late game. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> coming. I know, I saw some signs earlier today, like Techies wear. Fans were waiting for that. The Techies just waiting for the last one. Secret says, bam! There we go. Time to finish with a bang at the end of the day. The crowd is going wild. I think that's just an absolutely fantastic way to transition right into the game. Casters, what are we looking forward to in what could possibly be the last game of the first day here at ESL 1? You know what? I would love to hear what he said, but I didn't hear it over this crowd. The roar is deafening. The techies is real. And Seeker is the team to deliver it. With the Bloodseeker with the Tuscar, it's it's the winning combo. Snowballed into explosive action. I don't think we want to speak. Just let the crowd have it. <laughs> My God. This is this is why oh. Secret are basically one of the most popular teams out there. They will play anything, anytime, anywhere. What's at stake? It's a single elimination tournament with almost $300,000 up for grabs in the biggest stadium in Europe that we have for Dota 2. And they'll still be happy to pick up a Techies here in the grand final. They are one game up though. But still, this isn't just something that they're pulling out of their hat and saying, hey, this is just the first time. And they've done this before, Sindarin. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is one of their tested combos with uh, Snowball into Suicide Squad attack, which is very powerful against particular heroes in lane that have low armor. And there are some targets in this game for uh, for them for sure. Even a hero like Dragon Knight actually has very low armor until he gets some levels. It's so. gonna be war time already. Mushi's coming up behind the back, but Zai, well, he hasn't skilled up Snowball yet. Now he will, and Kuro was sitting right behind him. No, they they don't want to fight yeah. this. They'll just let Secret go in and do what they want because pretty much anyone they catch was just an instant kill for this duo and uh, better safe than sorry here I think is the call for Fnatic as they will probably try to get at least one rune maybe they can get the top one clock should be able to grab that from the blood seeker if he times it right and uh, well I'm just uh Techies is a weird hero, oh, man. It's, it's really weird. It's like... Dude, he's, he's a controller. He's actually picked up an Orb of Venom. For Orb of Venom is his first item. So he can try and play the distance game. He does no damage whatsoever. So having 4% move for speed slow is actually the best thing he gives. Top lane, Ohio, as well as Arteezy, already battling it out. And he, do, he does go for the first speed to start off with. Johnny almost also dies um, down the Radiant Jungle, and that was the suicide from Techies roll in. So while it does show 1-0 on the kill count, it's completely... Completely incorrect, that's not first blood. That's just an attempt to kill off Undying. Welcome to uh, Demolition Team Simulator 2015. Well, at this least is the tutorial. This is where you try you try out your you try out your explosives, you find out how good they are. They were not that good. So now you need to wait for two minutes, and then you can try them again. Or you could attack heroes for 30 damage in lane, so... <laughs> and 4% movement speed slow, Sin. That's Don't... true, he's got the Orb of Venom, which is actually really, really good on techies. It's a way for him to deal damage, so... 
He will hit Ohio here for a little bit. He's running double rings of protection, though, against the Suicide Squad attack, actually. It's pretty funny to see this build up from Ohio. Well, he'll know, this he'll is going to be such a clowny lane. He knows he'll survive for now. And Tiltek, he actually has level two as well. None of the players on the rest of the map for Fnatic will be worried about mines being anywhere. Uh, I do want to kind of watch very closely this middle lane engagement. S4 going up against Mushy, because the first thing Mushy did when he came to this lane was walk straight past S4, up to the dire side high ground, and take the last hit on the range creep. Didn't care about S4 attacking him the entire time, but he's going to have to start to care. He's expended his bottle charges, and it's going to be just a trade-off for burst damage between the two. At the same time, also on top lane, Poppy as well as uh, as well as Arteezy going to try and harass out this dual lane, which is really not easy. Like Queen of Pain and Dazzle, how are you even meant to win against such a lane? Well, I think if nothing else, they should just be able to farm with the Bloodseeker. When he gets a couple of levels here, he should be able to sustain himself with Blood Rage and a little bit of Shadow Wave. Of course, with this low levels, the Puppy only being level one, so he has the Shadow Wave only. He's actually getting harassed quite a bit here by KYXY, who is now going to lay into Arteezy. But you see it there, he's level, he's level three. He gets 137 health for last hitting a creep with level one Blood Rage. So as long as he gets, let's say, two creeps per wave, he's going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, S4 is dominating mid lane as expected, this is a very storm favored matchup. And then in the bottom lane, Tusk from Zai is out farming Ohio too, with Kuroki just harassing him out of lane, hitting really, really hard with his techies. <laughs> and there's just no counterplay available. What are you going to do? He's got 700 range. You're so funny, Sin. Thank you. Six seconds, and Kuro's got his ult. He's got oh, that's up a really good ice Johnny, card. Out of hold Johnny in position. Kuro's running in. Johnny doesn't want to be oh, here. He oh. doesn't have enough damage. Okay, He's too far away. Now he does, but Ohio's right behind him. Zai, he doesn't have mana for the shards. Then again, he can take that back. He has, he's walking around with a the mango. They lock him in the cogs. There's your explosion. Ohio, the shards will get the kill. Zai will take it out while up on top lane. KOS White blinks away from Arteezy. But is Zai out of the bushes? I don't think he is. Mushy with a haste rune. Chasing him down. Zai's in trouble on bot lane. Into the tree line, wants to cut through a quick salve, and he is dead. The Dragon Knight will get revenge, but it's still technically only one for one, even though the bullet says three for one. Because <laughs> that is two suicides. Yeah, and that's that's the risky thing about this kind of uh, this kind of lane. If they don't snowball, I no pun intended, it's going to be difficult for. It's going to be difficult for them to do a lot until Kuroki hits level 6. So the problem is, when these Suicide Squad attack kills fail, he, does, he doesn't get any experience, right? Oh, so, they're going in oh, again. On oh. Ohio, the shots to lock him in. There's no extra explosions apart from having that techie's mine, but Ohio able to run himself away. The drops him down, and he's got no consumables left. Same with Johnny. Like, the only thing that's going to keep him alive on this bottom lane is Soul Rip. Which isn't bad, but it's very expensive mana cost-wise for Undying. Yeah. A hundred mana very, each very time he goes for it. And of course, what if, I think Secret never... They didn't play this lane until Techies got the buff with the Mind Trigger time. Because this is not just about Suicide Squad attack. It's the fact that landmines have such a short trigger time now. It's, it's half a second, I think. Oh, um, they're going again. Yep. Bottom lane, Johnny. Johnny pretty snowballed dumb. in with that mine again, and Johnny is down. Undying will take the kill. I mean, the Undying will be split across all the Seekers. as the Catapult took the kill. How do you even prepare yourself for this? Like, if you're not worried about the suicide attack, you're worried about these landmines, as you said, with such a low, low cooldown. How do you even stay in the lane? You're always going to be able to snowball in. I think Fnatic should have probably anticipated this laning and maybe they could have put Quap down there and that would have been better because she then will you always... back behind the town? Yeah, kind of you just playing behind the town. If they try to snowball on you, you can counterplay them really hard. So that could have maybe worked, but then the question is who would have got a lot out of the top lane? Could they actually have played a Clockwork plus Disruptor up there against Dazzle Bloodseeker? I think that's a really difficult lane. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a trade-off where... If this bot lane was going a little bit better, they would be fine. But the problem is they're essentially right now losing all three lanes, I would say. So that is that is not looking good for Fnatic whatsoever. Two seconds, suicides off cooldown. S4 is also playing with Mushy. He might have enough damage here if he wants to jump, but there's not enough of a mana pool really for S4 to work with just yet. Yeah, but this suicide attacks off cooldown for Kuro, which means we've got... He doesn't have the full combo though, does he? 
They like need 275 mana for this and currently sitting at 2 3. He's getting and, bottled. Okay, now he's got a bolt. Now he's got the, the combo. So level 2 mine, level 2 suicide attack. All they gotta do is just get in range of Ohio. And the cogs won't protect him from that snowball. That's the problem as well, right? It's it, it, with clockwork you're generally expecting when you're playing a dual melee lane that you can always just or sorry not dual melee but techies technically just wants to get up in your face right that you can just drop the cogs and get out but this particular lane is actually really good against him so he has to try to find an alternative way of playing this which i feel like just doesn't exist like he has to roam i think if he plays this lane it's not going to work it's too late now to gank mid because s4 is level seven so i don't think they can kill him and with quap only being level five in the top i i feel like this game is getting out of control actually six minutes in fanatic are losing heavily they're, on their lanes they're not they're getting going levels again. of the heroes they need we're, we're going again zai is close enough that he can actually snowball into ohio but actually no kuro backs up all right, out of out of control might be an, an overstatement, but it's definitely. Here they go, snowball in. The shards won't get it perfectly. The undying tombstone, but there goes the suicide. But it's not enough damage to kill off Ohio this time around. The shards are a little bit too short, and the damage <laughs> combo wasn't there. And the dumb thing about this is that they lose nothing. Top right? lane, mushy, Astrone jumps in, Poppy instantly oh, balled up. Shallow great. grave can't get time for it, so the stun will work, and they just chip into the tier one tower on the top lane. So it's a good Arteezy though, he is really fast. Who is low on the map right now? The bottom lane for Fnatic are both very dying. low. Snowball in, they're going on Ohio. Actually, that's just Zai getting the hell away with ice shards. He's actually got Ohio trapped for the moment. But Ohio's up to level six and he's still fairly tanky. Arteezy. With Puppy returning to the top lane, he's considering just chipping away at him. Comes in for Mushy, actually dropping him down pretty low on Arteezy. He's gonna move really quickly. You cannot run away from this one. You almost have to turn a fire, especially when S4 comes zipping himself in on the Mushy. No Vortex mana, but it's still enough to do the work. Arteezy, he's lost his blood first. They got the kill on the target they wanted. So now he's unable to have that bonus movement speed. Ohio and Johnny too far away. Back in base at the moment. It feels like Fnatic have like... <laughs> that's one of the strengths of playing a lineup like this. They have no experience playing against these kind of heroes and this kind of composition. So even if they've seen it before and they might have like, you know, we expect Secret might run this techies Tusk thing and we've seen other teams play it and we think we have a plan. But even if you have a good idea, it's... It's so much different watching from playing in this situation. It's very stressful for them, I think, right now. And, they feel like they can't really find a grip in their lanes, and it's only going to get harder. So, yep. I, in my opinion, a lot is on the shoulders of Kachik in this game oh. with the Disruptor. I think he has to, to get some really good storms as mid lane. Yeah, this Mushi is Dragonite. It's going to be in a lot of trouble. Might actually be able to survive this defensive TP. Absolutely not. Uh, at the same time, up on top lane, Hookshot into Cog to Barry Assault and full Sonic Wave committal. Killed off Puppy. That's all they managed to achieve with that kill. And Fnatic, they're going to need more than a support kill for this. And in fact, Arteezy battling up against KOXY. Can't blink himself away, so KOXY is dead. And S4, with a TP up, grabs himself a double kill. No more mana for more zips, but this Orchid is rapidly approaching. The top tower gets denied. The Bloodseek is fine with this. And again on bottom lane, we're going in for the ball. After Johnny, where's your punch? There it is. Suicide, not even required. The mines are now doing the work at level three. And they get the kill on the Undying Secret. Just pressuring every single point of Fnatic's nervous system. And the... It's going to be tricky for them when Kuro starts hitting... He's close to level 6, actually, on the techies. That's one of the really big benefits of running a lane like this. Techies is usually a hero that's super slow at leveling up because you depend on mine kills. If you're not successful with them, you know, you could see techies not reaching level 6 before, say, minute, like, 15 to 20. But when you run a dual lane like this, even though they haven't been massively successful, he's still going to get it around minute 10. And Fnatic will have to be so careful with how they move on in their map. And to be honest with you, they really can't afford buying Troopsite right now on any of their heroes because they've mm -hmm. lost all the lanes. So this is a very, very big problem and everything definitely going according to plan for Secret. Look at those last hit scores. <laughs> so far ahead. Yeah, they're, they're ripping it up and the towers are going to start to be brought down as well. We started talking about all the power that Techies has up against heroes, throwing down mines, having explosions. But the, the amount of damage that these mines do to towers and of course, the, the cast time through of it, it's very difficult to get that fortification straight off. And again, we're seeing this similar build to what happened during our placement matches, where we get this hand of Midas actually two minutes earlier than he did during the placement match on this Bloodseeker.
And now, Hawkshot bottom lane, they go after Zai. Snowball for protection, Koro just has to get out of here. He doesn't have enough mana, but he's caught in the edge of the storm. The Snowball will come in with a double stun, but in comes Esfod 2, focusing the drop to Zai. He will eventually drop. And, uh, well, actually, there's no real revenge. Tuscar buying back into the game. They want to try and fight on bottom lane. S4, there's not a lot of matter really to work with. And with this Tuscar sigil up, they're slowing everything down. It's almost that, in fact, the Cower is not going to kill it off. It's down a two-way speed. There's your stun. Snowball in. Sonic Wave going to miss. They're inside the Snowball with the Blood Rite also coming in. They have to back up behind the tower, but S4's following them down. Picks up Ohio. They've lost Queen of Pain as well. Mushy, how long can he survive? A little bit longer with that Soul Rip from Johnny. But that's not going to be much longer as Arteezy in behind the trees. Killing off Johnny. Moving to Mushy. It's a rampaging seeker. And into the minds of Techies. They are hiding in the tree line from Goro. He'll find the kill and they'll take that bottom tier one tower and the fight to boot. And they got exactly what they wanted out of that Zai buyback. He actually bought back and poured it back to the tier one bottom. And the only reason that worked was that Fnatic got kill hungry. They really wanted to jump Puppy and try to get an advantage in the fight. But Zai was in position to get the snowball. When the Sonic Wave whiffs entirely, that fight is just over. They cannot afford to get dodged by that, uh, like that by the snowball. And you know, I said a lot has to come down to Kachik's play. I think he made the perfect play. His disruption, or sorry, his uh, kinetic field static storm combination was great. He got the glimpse onto the storm as Zai in the mid gonna get jumped again. I think he might not really have a good snowball target right now. Well, he doesn't have a target, but he might better buy enough time for the rest of his teammates to arrive. The Sigil drop, the TP support's coming in. One charge, the bottle charge available. And now they go for the rupture on Mushy. With the shards, they try and separate the fight too. The rest of Secret are not coming up to fight. But Koro, well, there's a little present there and Ohio's gonna open it. And with the explosion, it's gonna go down too. Suicidal was able to get the spill damage out to the drop there. Kill off the clockwork. And they thought they were getting an advantage back after pushing him back down the mid. Is this S4's going again. He's actually gonna go again. He's jumping, keeping this regeneration rune up, and then just goes on KYXY. Look for that vortex timing. Wants to wait for the time for the blink, and this is basically the moment. Maybe not even need, need it. There's your jump up. Ball lightning up with the overload. Easy kill for S4. And that's practically awkward. Techies is just one of those heroes that completely changes a game. It's. I can really feel, like, just watching how Fnatic move around the map and what they're doing, they are super frustrated. Like, they can't, they can't just play the game the way they're used to, because they have to second-guess themselves every time. Like, Techies is one of the best heroes in the game when you get ahead, because the enemy team don't know where they can move and when. So it's like, it becomes like this kind of psychological warfare where you don't, don't only play against the enemy team, you play against your own doubts the whole time. And this time, they're really confident running up that cliff. They lose two heroes because of it. Now, for the rest of the time in this game, they will barely dare go into their own jungle. Look at them right now. Like, they're really hesitant to just walk up the staircase. And in fact, now they're, now they're warning Hook shot up. They found Koro. Suicide is not available, but they lock him inside the wall. This will be the death of Koro right now. Disruptor will take it, and Puppy stunned up. They'll find both the supports here of Secret, but at the same time, the Orca jump. KOXY isolated on the backhand. He'll die, and Puppy, the Shallow Grave, it won't keep him alive long enough. The Blood Rite was going to give him enough space to get back, but Mushy stuck with it. He found the kill. And Tuscar, Zai, he's in pretty close here. But at the can same the time, they got no vision of the high ground. There's no way he can do this. What, Mushy? <laughs> no. That was actually, that was pretty decent for Fnatic. They went for it, they had the Sentry Ward planted in the area, so they knew they could go for the hookshot right there, and they get the Static Storm down at the right time from Kachik, so Kuro can't use uh, Suicide Squad attack, and... Oh, he actually had it on cool yeah, anyway, on so there was no play there, yeah. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? So... They still, they have to commit more and more money into this true site. And in the meantime, S4 is six and zero on the Storm Spirit. And if you just look at the kill death score, it's not representative because I think four of Kuro's deaths are suicides. So it's technically seven to 14, I believe. So the lead for Secret is bigger than it just looks here. Oh, and S4. S4, yeah. S4 with a double damage rune as well to rip through a high. The Soul Rip will keep him up. And S4, he's low. He's going to get out of here. Ball lightning's away. They got the kill. It was actually Techies that managed to get it. I don't know if that was actually with a right click or not. But S4, Shallow Grave. Is there enough time? And ball up. He doesn't have a lot of life for the one card. Here comes the Sonic Wave. Kuro will commit suicide and gets the kill on the Queen of Pain. Here's the shards. They're trying to control Johnny, but it's actually Arteezy in the middle of the fight. All the movement speed in the world. Johnny is still pretty low, but he's He's trapped him there with Arteezy, who moves over for a double kill. S4 pulling back clockwork. This will be a dieback for Ohio. And six heroes down. The price was still the buyback of S4. 
but you got to buy back and die back out from the clockwork, so well worth it. And they took the tier one tower to boot. This may even be Roshan if they can. Do they have enough for it? They don't have any mines there, right? It's going to take them quite a while to do that. They have no medallion, I believe. I, I do think Puppy is building for it. Maybe it's actually flying out. It is. So, yeah. Yep. It's on the I curve. I guess it's time with the medallion. They should be able to do it in time. And Zai's also finished a full Glimmer Cape. That's also over on the courier. 10,000 golden experience lead minute 15. The entire map is being taken away from them too. Like, Fnatic are coming. They, they saw the fact that Roshan's being done, but then again, they may just be too late. Because Roshan with negative four armor and the sigil slowing them down. Yep, they've got this. Fnatic cannot reach it in time, even with the rocket scouting it out. They'll realize that now Storm Spirit has two lives. S4 is getting really, really strong. Eight kills, one death. Has the Orchid, has the Aegis Minute 16. It feels like he can build for as aggressive items as he wants, because he will more or less always be the one to get the jump. And even if he fails, as long as Zai ha is in Glimmer Cape range, there is no counterplay for Fnatic. I don't yeah, think they can kill him. Mushy in from the rear. This might oh, break. Oh, oh, go. Go. Into the double storm. Kuro and Zai, they're down for the count. And they're all to be stunned up. Two heroes down for Secret Fnatic. Great fight for them. They're just going to hold this advantage, and they should be able to. Right. The Tombstone's down secret have no intention of coming back for this. Yeah, they need more than those two kills. It's still, it's about 2,500 gold for them, so that's pretty big, but they want more. They want this tower, and if they can get the game back to even, I think they have a pretty good shot. Like, the really difficult part of the game is, after losing the laning stage, not getting completely run over until minute 25. Like, this fight is a very, very big comeback. Artis is coming in, Rapture, Zip Zip goes S4, chasing after Mushi, the blood right, perfect position. Mushi's not gonna like this one, especially with the Orchid. The Sorum can't keep him alive, and the Battery Soul can't hold him up either. In fact, the Orchid was used over on the Disruptor, so they found two for this. Ohio, no stuns, he'll be able to keep himself away to safety, but Johnny's on the run and losing armor quickly because this weave that's now on top of him. Arteezy, all the movement speed in the world, and chase after, and he goes down! Bloodseek have been brought down by the tower, and Johnny will survive through all of this, and in fact, Secret, in a really bad position. Came on X-Y with a Sonic Wave to heal from Puppy. It keeps him alive for now. Shadow Grave on S4. No mana left. Just tries to turn the damage into him. He'll die. There goes Jurega Simon. The Techies will again blow himself up. But S4, not pushed back by the Cogs. Okay, he walks into him. Now he's pushed back by the Cogs. But Secret really getting aggressive up against Fnatic. Yeah, just when I said Fnatic needed to... Uh get that tower and, and try to not get run over, they immediately just get engaged on like that. But they managed to come out with an even fight, I guess, all in all there. They didn't lose gold, I think, after that exchange. So no, it was, it was pretty level. in it, but this is still such a big mountain to climb. And it just feels like the moment Secret take one good fight, if they get ahead in the fight, S4 will just pick, pick, pick more kills. And he's going to find one bottom. He's going to go on Mushy as the BB. Yeah, Glyph's going to pull him play, back though. out, though. The damage on Mushy is enough for the Orca to trigger him. I, th I still think S4 is happy with this. If he saw the TP from Johnny, it's a TP rotation. He forces Mushy back to base. Kachik gives his position away. It's a lot of information from this play that Secret can use for, uh, for their next play. Koro, the defender of Tier 1 Towers. Won't let a single one go, and in fact, the double sentry walls that got planted out, he's going to get rid of. That's really costly for Fnatic. Every sentry ward is like gold up against techies. And now it means that basically Kuro can lay as many mines as he wants to in the mid if he wants to prep them like that. But the way we normally see Kuro, he throws them down when they're required. Not that much prep into the trees. It's actually, it's pretty funny to see techies played this way where you know, it's so different from the norm that it's it's a completely different hero than than the usual techies, which is also a completely different hero from every other hero. See, son, like, he's putting down the mines on top of the camps now. Dual Scepter will arrive for Queen of Pain shortly. Kuro, he is actually preparing traps. And the sentry ward is, actually, I think it's just out of range. It is. It clips the edge of the mine, but doesn't hit the middle of it, so it shouldn't reveal it. Now hookshot up, but already Koro! Double kill on the three! Butter bing, butter double kill. It looks too easy. What a hero. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Dota hero, Sid. That's a Dota hero. Are you sure? He's... I feel like I'm watching another game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching a terrific game for, for any troll that is out there.
This is your style of game. And after this match as well, Techie's pick rate inside all matchmaking games is going to go up by at least 15%. You're hearing this unconfirmed stat here first. Do you want, do you want a spoiler? What's the spoiler, Sint? They will not have this success rate. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, not, well, not unless they're Koro. He really does play this well, and with, it's the combination with Zai. They've just got this down pat, and it's not always just going in for going in for snowball or suicide attacks. Like, that was only the first couple of kills, because you just realize how much damage you can do with the, the very early burst combination of damage between the two of them. What makes it even better is the fact that Koro, with, like, he's, he's one of the, I want to say oldest players, but he's been around, so he's one of the veterans of the scene, and he just re can read the play so well. Not Zai, Glimmer Cape, that Central Walker still see him. Hook shot up, Mushi gonna be on the back room with the stun. Zai needs more space here. 9 1 charges, we'll not be able to keep him alive. He'll accept his fate and die. But yeah, Koro can really predict play very, very well. So he knows where Fnatic is, go is gonna wanna go next. And he just prepares for that position. Well, he can't save the tier 1 in mid. His days are over. Well, he didn't predict that. I think, I, mean. <laughs> I, I think even if he did, he realized he cannot stop it. Because yeah, there's probably. no way you really want to push into a tower well, actually, without dropping a sentry ward, which they actually didn't do. But they had an observer ward up, so they knew that uh, he wasn't prepping any mines. Now, here's the challenge for Fnatic is, all right, they spot him with a rocket. They have a really good idea of their mines there. I think what they need to do is they need to buy a gem, and then they have to scout with rocket before they go up every single high ground so they don't, or like every single like tight spot where there might be mines, they have to play super safe. <laughs> but I think the gem is the way back into this game. It's the general counter against techies and pub games, and it is also the counter to techies and competitive, where the problem they've had so far in this game is that I think they feel like no one can afford it, but you know, Disruptor will have to be all right with having Tranquil Boots and Wand as his only items, because they will definitely need that item in the next few. There might be another issue too, the fact that they're running three melee heroes on Fnatic. Who really has the attack range to bring down these big kegs without taking the spill damage? I just, is, I'm assuming Disruptor will be fine with that. Queen of Pain is okay too. Dragon form? If he's in it already, you don't want to pop Dragon form to destroy remotes generally, but... Yep. He's actually standing on top one right now. So well, they which, if, if they I guess Koro will steal the big centaur. Nope. Right. Well, keeps it secret for now. I was actually wondering if, it, if they're waiting for, like, just the right time to snowball in, pop the mine, pop off the explosion, and then you would be able to kill off Mushy. So like, if, if you're watching, all right, if you're watching Dota 2 for the first time ever, and you look at, like, a guy running around placing mine like this, you're like, oh, that's why they're called Team Secrets. <laughs> like, you actually have no idea what you can do on the map right now. They're just playing in the shadows. It's like, you can relate to this a lot more if you've played other games than if oh, you've only horror. <laughs> His trap may actually work. He's got oh three my. mines on the right. The smoke's not breaking. Kuro is actually too far to the left. The smoke has not broken. So Fnatic will be able to go for a bit of a loop-de-loop. -loop. And now they'll come in. Remember, this nighttime vision is pretty bad, and Zai blinks himself up. Mushi already triggered Dragon Form, and they're coming down to the Tier 2 tower, but you got Puppy TPing out from the trees, going all the way back to base. They have no desire to fight this. But at the same time, they're really happy. With every failed smoke gank, I think they're definitely not happy. Like, it, I mean, one way you dodge a bullet, but on the other hand, it's your way back into the game. You have to, these kill, these ganks have to result in one or two kills. Mm -hmm. Actually, one kill is not even sufficient. It needs to result in two or more, because they've got to have the feeling that Secret's just flat out out farming them, and that they're going to play a similar game to last game, where you're just going to spread the map. This time it's going to be a Storm Spirit instead of the Co-op for S4. RTZ on the Bloodseed with Shadow Blade and BKB can just farm away, not really scared of getting ganked since BKB has been the first item picked up by Mushi. So the lanes will always be in Secret's favor, and Roshan is just theirs to claim whenever it spawns. Because once again, Fnatic don't know if they can go there. Do they? Did they buy a gem? They, they, they can't go. No, they actually they bought two Sentry Wars and an Observer uh, 30 seconds ago. That's their only detection. But Kuro is literally making Fort Kega right now on top of this hillside. No one wants to walk up there. And they can't get close enough to kill off, like, to even contest Roshan. S4 now gets Nagus is immortal. This is the second gone uncontested. And you actually ask yourself now, how is Fnatic meant to even enter their own jungle? With the, a gem. With, there we go. But even if you've got a gem, you need to get high ground vision up here. They've got a rocket. Yeah, they have rocket. 
I mean, they but still the, need you to can also, up around it. But yeah, they, you, can get yeah. Snow, you can get snowballed out. You can... Like, the second you drop low to, then Artiz, he's got the, like, max movement speed. Just it, is not, not max. it is not a safe play, but it's the only play. So you kind of you're kind of forced to do this. Oh, and this could be a good play. S4 oh, jump in. He actually goes for the disruptor, but you got the blink deck now on Mushy jumping in on S4 with the tombstone down. S4 doesn't really have a lot of mana here. He does, however, have one a courier kill and two an Aegis of the Immortal. So they find themselves a kill. They try and drag them back up to the mines, and now Boris punch up with the shots. They isolate Ohio, protect him inside the snowball. The cults might go down, and now they come out. They're so low with the shadow wave damage. They kill up Clockwork. S4 still alive. Remember. He's got Aegis the Immortal. Kuro glimicates himself away safety on 22 life. Now they bleed scream in, but you're approaching death, Mushy. The BKB, half a second, it's gonna go, and boom! Four heroes down, about to be five. Johnny Orkin, if the snowball comes in, it's all five dead. Disruptor, this fight's gone so long, or he's just so level, he's already respawned. And they drop the gem in true sight. Pop. Well, now, now they just need to hold for another, uh... How many minutes is that? How can you hold? They can get a gem in nine minutes. How, <laughs> you are Mr. Optimus, Cinder. Well, like I, like I said, they have to try to make that play. I think yep. the fact that it fails, they just got outplayed there, but they did the right thing. Like, they should have moved differently. They should not have fallen for the bait, and they had to have the gem walking with them. They fell into the trap of having Undying pull back, and he was the one with the gem, and everyone else chased for the kill. So if he's there, they don't go for that chase. And... Instead, they just end up losing five heroes again, I think. It was the entire team that got wiped, right? Yes, yeah, it was. It definitely was, so. It was, it was a, yeah, it was a five for Kuro. And he actually died. But it also showed the frustration of Fnatic that you blink both your DK and your Queen of Pain over to kill a techies during a fight. And now, Arteezy, maybe a little bit of trouble as Mushy blinks in on him. Movement speed, well, okay, he's got Shadow Blade. And he's actually finished up the full Silver's Edge. This DK has just gotten a hell of a lot weaker. Yeah, you can remove the full Dragon's Blood with Break. It's essentially a minus 12 armor in that case for, for the duration of the Silver Edge attack. So it's definitely going to be very useful against him. There's nothing else that you can break in this game, I think, right? Absolutely nothing. Of course, the damage reduction will always go to any hero, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's no other passives, so... The mine just gets planted again after he steals the creep. There's just nowhere the Fnatic can feel free to do what they want. Well, maybe in middle lane, hook shot down on Zai, but Snowball, well, it's actually on cooldown, but they'll still commit the ultimate in from the disruptor, but here comes S4 with a the right. They're going to try and glimpse him straight back out again, but the damage has already been done to the Undying. Oh, Puppy is solo killing the disruptor on the sidelines. you got the rest of them on the front lines, taking killing off the track at night. And Queen of Pain also not helped. The Undying S4 slices him through with ball lightning. From one side of the river to the other, now up to 10 Bloodstone charges after only just purchasing this. The Clockwork is the only sole survivor for Fnatic. And with Techie still alive, the pushing power into this tower is so big. Just watch the pop from the, from the mines. You can, you can work through building so quickly, not to mention the spill damage will hit both range and melee racks if you place it right. There's absolutely no buybacks on the Radiant side. They should definitely be able to get the tier 3 here. They're not going to be scared, even if there were buybacks. I'm not sure Secret even need to be nervous about taking this fight. Coral will be taking out the tower very soon. Good timing in the Glyph here from Fnatic. Will delay it as much as they can. It's still 15 seconds. Arteezy is hitting very, very hard and fast with this Blood Rage. Look, look at Kuro's prep already. He's putting kegs on the back lines as well as stasis traps. So if Vanny do try and chase them out to get these, like, these runaway kills, then Kuro's just gonna punch a hook shot in from Ohio, and maybe now they have enough damage, but no one's easy. Force out down the cogs. They'll run back. Remember that one keg is still there, which is standing on top of it. The where's your damage? S4 pulled back, orchid up. Shallow Grave will buy protection, which means he's got jump ball time. Away to safety with the TP. Another oh. Silver Sonic Wave reaches in from KYXY. S4 will drop, but it's a trap. They're in on KYXY. Double keggers. Do they want to throw it down? More support coming in. No, 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 no. Triple kill for Koro! Mistakes were made and traps were triggered! And now even Mushy locked inside an icy prison of shards and he will go down. He wants at least a kill on me. He can't get anything. GG! 30 minutes! Fnatic have been 2-0 out by Secret Techies. Wonderful combo, wonderful play, and smiles all round. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that is just like those kind of strategies are just. It's such a strange.